All right, guys, welcome to the channel. Um, today, I'm working on a 2016 Jeep Wrangler. I'm gonna show you a very common problem that happens with these Jeeps with this engine, uh, the 3.6 liter V6. Uh, go ahead and listen to this ticking that the engine is making. As you can hear, this thing's got a bad tick. Um, and today I'm going to show you guys um, why these engines make this ticking and what to do about it. Notice how after the repair, um, the ticking noise goes away and the engine's running smooth as it normally should. No more noise. So the purpose of this video isn't to show every single individual step, but to just kind of give you an overview of why this ticking happens and how to prevent it. So um, I pulled off the intake, the valve cover, so where you can see the camshafts and underneath the camshafts are the rocker arms. And the culprit is this rocker arm right here. I'm gonna show you guys, listen to it. So essentially this rocker arm, um, when the camshaft makes its revolution, the lobe on the camshaft presses down on the rocker arm. The rocker arm in turn uh, presses down on the valve spring, opening up the valves. And um, in this case, the roller bearing that's in the center of the rocker arm has come apart. And so due to the collapsed bearing, um, it's caused the camshaft lobe to become scored um, as well. And then of course you get this ticking noise. So here's a comparison of the rocker arm that's damaged versus a new one. So as you can see here, check out this bearing in the middle. It's got a lot of play in it, up and down, side to side. Um, this bearing should not move. Um, it should be able to, to rotate, but as far as moving laterally, horizontally, vertically, no, it should not move. Check out this new bearing. It moves smoothly. Um, rotate smoothly without any lateral play and this is how it should be this is one um, that bearing inside has come apart this happens very commonly on these engines um, if you have any Dodge Chrysler or Jeep with a 3.6 liter v6 and it's developed a ticking noise uh, more than likely this is the cause So right here, this is just showing um, kind of the beginning stages of how I go about repairing this. So basically you just set it to top dead center um, where these marks that I'm pointing to are facing up. The two arrows on the VVT sprockets are facing each other. There are special tools like this one I'm using uh, to hold the gears in place to where they don't move. I've really found that um, you can use the tool if you want, but it's not really entirely necessary. Um, so basically I'm just gonna mark the chain uh, links. That way I can put it back in the original position when I'm done, because you do have to remove the chain to get the sprockets off, um, to get the camshafts out, to remove the rockers. So I'm gonna use a 36 millimeter socket to break free these oil control valves. Once these are loose, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take them out so that I can get these sprockets out of the way. Now, one thing that I didn't um, record in this particular video is in order to get this chain off the easiest way possible, you're gonna wanna release the, uh, the tension and the timing chain tensioner. And that's kind of a whole another separate deal in and of itself. Um, but uh, for now, you know, I'm just showing you guys sort of an overview. So uh, once you get these sprockets off, um, then basically I'm going to tie up the chain to kind of hold it out of the way. And then the rest of it, um, would be, you know, pretty straightforward from there. So both sprockets are off the, I've just zip tied the chain out of the way and, um, we're gonna go ahead and remove the, uh, the camshaft bearing caps. So I've already loosened them here. I didn't wanna waste time showing you know, every individual step, but basically 
these caps are coming off they do have to be installed in their in their original positions um, and then the camshaft it may be kind of stuck if you just put a, a wrench on it and kind of wiggle it back and forth it, it'll pop up and pop free then you'll be able to remove it out of the way um, and then those rocker arms underneath they just they just come right out so I'm gonna take off um, each rocker arm there's only one of them in this Jeep that is bad the one that I showed earlier but um, while we're here we're gonna go ahead and replace all the rocker arms and we're gonna replace all the lifters too these are the lifters here that I'm removing So I got new lifters here uh, from the dealer and then um, I'm going to go ahead and put those in and then I've got the new rocker arms as well from the dealer so I'm going to go ahead and uh, get those put in after I get the lifters in. Brand new rocker arms going in. And there's no trick to this guys they just set they just set right on top alrighty so this camshaft is actually this one isn't damaged so we're reusing it we're not replacing the camshaft um, there's no need to because the the lobes aren't scored on this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it back in position Kind of wiggle it back and forth make sure it's it's set in there then I'm gonna put the caps back in place and Then tighten them down um, Of course these do have to be torqued to spec um, the spec on these is uh, 84 inch pounds but um, You know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna show me torquing it down, but um, like I said, this is just kind of an overview. So I got that side on, um, the other side, uh, I went ahead and just kind of skipped ahead. So I got the other side off, got the new parts installed. Um, I did replace this camshaft. Um, on the exhaust side due to the scoring on that one lobe and I'm gonna go ahead and because um, it's a brand new camshaft it's no um, no oil on it or anything so I'm gonna go ahead and put some gear assembly lube I'm gonna put some gear assembly lube um, on the lobes of the other camshaft as well because we do have new rocker arms uh, I just want to make sure that everything is lubricated well once I start up the engine for the first time after this is done and then of course reinstall the bearing caps in the same order that I took them off. Snug these down and once again these do have to be torqued. Um, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna show myself torquing them here, but I did torque them, so don't want you guys to worry about that. All right guys, so I gotta get the sprockets back on now. So I'm gonna start with the exhaust side. See, it's got this little pin on the inside and that pin corresponds to that little hole right there on the end of the camshaft. So that's the position it's gotta go in in order for it to, to slide into place on the camshaft. So I'm gonna line up my painted mark with the uh, top mark on the uh, sprocket. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get it slid onto the camshaft. I'm gonna rotate it until it, it falls into place.
Then I'm going to go ahead and put that oil control valve back in. Um, I'm not going to tighten it fully yet. I'm just going to kind of, you know, snug it in place to hold the sprocket in place. And then, of course, after this, in order to get the intake sprocket on and to get everything lined up properly, um, I'm going to have to rotate this camshaft a little bit to bring it over into the right position. So after you take the camshafts off and then you put them back on, um, you really can't put it back in the exact right position it's kind of difficult too because the, the spring try, the springs underneath put tension on the lobes and it, it tries to sort of move the camshaft into a into a neutral position to where there's no no spring load on it so just kind of put them in there as close as, as you can and then um, and then you can always rotate rotate everything once you get the you know once you're trying to get the chain on there so I got my marks back where they're supposed to be I'm just gonna rotate the sprockets a little bit um, counterclockwise to get some of that uh, slack over to where the the tensioner is and then um, I've, I've put a little paper clip in to hold that tensioner in um, so I'm gonna pull that paper clip right now to release the tension on the tensioner so now everything is back to its original position and we're ready to reassemble and that's it guys that's what you got to do to fix these rocker arms on these engines <laughs>